Pittsburgh Penguins in a seven-piece back-and-forth trade have traded for Kasperi Kapanen. And, oh boy, is that just a message loud and clear that, like, fuck the future. Sorry for swearing. Sorry for swearing, but F the future. Because that's, that's where this team's at. It, it's so clear. This was going to be such a telling offseason. And, uh, and when they kept that 15th pick... Uh, overall, I did mention um, in the podcast that could you imagine if they trade it? And and I remember Mike being like, "Oh no, they won't do that." And then he kind of paused on it for a couple of seconds. He goes, "Oh yeah, they might do that." And they've just done that. It sucks that I'm not happy that Captain's back. I was really excited when they drafted him. He's one of the few players that we've been able to draft in the first round um, in the last ten years. Um, other notables are Oli Mata and Derek Pouliot. <laughs> Do you remember Derek Pouliot? Anyone remember him? Eighth overall? No? No? Oh, God. Yeah, we've not had a good run with just first-round draft picks. We either trade them away in trades that don't work out, or we just whiff on them. <laughs> and there's no middle ground. We'll get to all the pieces, but the reason why this is frustrating is this t does not change anything for this team to win now. They can't win a Stanley Cup. They, they can't. We need to be honest as a fan base. They can't win a Stanley Cup. With their current lineup, they can't win a Stanley Cup. Captain doesn't change that. Am I excited he's coming back under a different circumstances with a different trade? I'd be so stoked that he's coming back. It's kind of exciting that Captain's a penguin again. He's a very likable dude and I think, you know, fits some sort of a mold of, a, of, of what a penguin is. But for a first... For a 15th overall in a good draft, that, that might be a very good draft. I mean, we'll yet to find out, and, and especially with the whole corona stuff on, on how much that's affected some of these kids' development developments. Um, I do really think that there's a good draft and some really good players between 10 and 20. Um, and some players that may fall, uh, especially with the Europeans, the way that they've kind of interviewed, it, it, it looks like you know there might be some good old Canadian boys uh, in that middle there that have had pretty good CHL seasons this year. But, um, yeah, it's just... Being a fan, I'm wearing my flurry um, fat penguin jersey just because I wanted to feel good. I was going to get my Marta jersey. That's too depressing. So my flurry jersey. Back when he was a good teammate and <laughs> didn't have his agent <laughs> send out messages. <laughs> yeah, he fell on the grenade once. He ain't fallen on it again. Um, oh, man. It's just... What a... <sighs> I mean, where do we go from here? Like, yeah, this team's clearly not worrying about the future. Uh, it's not just Rutherford. There's clearly, like, people, like, ownership and whatnot are like, no, let's win now. We've got Sidney Crosby. But you can't do that and then get Sidney Crosby's friend, Jack Johnson, a five-year contract. Like, the two just don't line up um, at all. This defense is the thing that, that's a real issue. And, and, again, it's not fixed. There's still... A room in the off season um, for more things to, to happen, and if you look at a Rutherford interview, it definitely looks like one of the uh, goaltenders probably Murray is going to get traded. But that, even if that is a complete steal of a trade, which Rutherford might pull off, because if you look in his history, it's kind of one good trade, one horrendous trade, and it's just this constant thing. Like you look at Morano, uh, that trade, it was a sixth round pick, and that dude's amazing on our blue line. So, um, like, it's so weird. But that doesn't mean, even if he gets an absolute steal with Murray, it doesn't mean he did not overpay for Kapanen, who's a fast forward that cannot score and just had struggle scoring throughout his entire career in the NHL. He has one 20-goal season. Last season, he got 13 goals. Um, yeah, like, it's just Haglin or, or Shiri. Like, it's just one of those, like... You can get those players in this league without paying a first o <laughs> first round pick for it. And it's just so painful to see that go. And you just kind of knew it as a Penguins fan. And you just know. And the worst thing is, is they don't have this year's. And now because they deferred that from the Minnesota Wild to get Kapanen. Um, next year's uh, first round pick is not lottery protected. So you better make the playoffs. You better make the playoffs. Because, uh, oh boy. It could just be, you know, a very good player that you're you're getting rid of. I haven't looked too much into next year's draft, and and again, their development. I mean, that's going to be very up in the air. So I understand kind of getting rid of next year's pick a little bit in the sense that I think that's going to be a little bit magic beans when it comes to the players that are able to play well on the ice in, in junior and Europe might not necessarily 
uh, be the best players in three to four years' time once every, once the world sort of gets back to normal. So I get getting rid of that, that pick to a degree, but it needed to be for something really good, and I think this year's draft was that. Was it, It's better to get a 15th pick now with a bit of certainty of what you're getting than probably going to a bit of an uncertain world um, in next year's draft with, with, you know, the leagues could be shut down and that's going to change things. Otherwise, some people, um, you know, it's going to affect people uh, in different ways um, when it comes to these young kids. Uh, yeah, but obviously, with, with everything going on. So, um, yeah, I, I just think next year's draft is a little bit magic bean. So I understand getting, getting away from it, but also, like, if you get a first overall pick, it's still going to be money. Still going to be found money. So uh, the other pieces are Aberg um, and Jasper uh, Lindgren. Uh, Lindgren um, uh, they come back. Aberg uh, had a pretty good AHL season this year. He had 44 points in 55 games. Hasn't really been able to translate into the NHL at all. He had a 13 goal year with Anaheim a few years ago. Um, just seems to be one of those fringe players that you know might be something maybe. But I'm just sort of looking at a lot of the. Report. I haven't seen him play very much, I'll be honest, but I, I've read a fair bit about him before doing this video. That's why it's a little bit late, because I want to do a bit of reading. And, um, and yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to be anything NHL caliber. May work out. I don't think it, it's a big part of the drill, uh, deal. Uh, Lingren is not an NHL defenseman. Um, yeah, he's an AHL uh, defenseman. Um, Evan Rodriguez uh, goes the other way, um, which is not a bad thing for the Penguins. Um, just because he's an RFA with arbitration rights and obviously everything with the cap and then the steady thing, it's not too bad to get out, out from under that. I don't have a qualm with that. Hollander, um, was a, you know, a pretty interesting prospect going into the training camp, um, for, well, this season, uh, you know, all the way back in September, but, um, just doesn't look like he may be NHL ready at all ever. Um, especially with the skating and a few other things that you see some people writing about him. He might be able to get there, but yeah, I, you know, we'll see what time tells there. And David Warofsky, nothing too big there. It's a lot of AHL pieces, uh, being mixed, but obviously that 15th. For Kapanen, um, when Kapanen, I think, was drafted like 21st overall from memory. So, I mean, already moving up from the draft. It's just it's just such a kick to the balls that this team won't retool on the fly. Because there is nothing here. There's nothing in this in this farm system going forward. Like, there, there really is not much. Like, they have a lot of problems. And don't get me wrong, I'm great. The rumors were... I mean, it's funny, the rumours were Jack Johnson going that way, and, and everyone was like, yes, do it. And then the other the other room was Rust, and everyone was like, no, don't, no, no, we need Rust. Um, so at least he's not going anywhere, but oh boy, it's just, it's just really sad to see that, like, this is, this is it for this team for the next few years. Like, this is it. There is no retool on the fly, there is no rebuild, as long as Crosby and Malkin... And, and this organization believes they can win a cup, which I don't think they can, at least with their current setups at the moment. Um, they're going to be all in. And it's just something that we kind of, as Penguins fans, uh, hope. It's now, it's now hope for us, right? Like, we had so much success. I'm not being one of those fans that aren't going to be like, you know, we didn't win three cups or anything in, in this in this era. Um, or even say, I, I don't like the comment of like, we well, should have won more with Crosby. Three cups is a lot. Three cups is, is, a, is a lot. Like, it's it's hard to win those things, especially in a cap league with, with parity. But um, three cups is, is a really good effort. And there's some really good teams that they versed and and, um, and some really good moments as a, as a Penguins fan. I know I cover all the all the teams, um, but obviously when I do a Penguins video, it is from a, a, a fan perspective more than an uh, analyzing things as I do with the other, um, well, 31 teams now that Seattle's coming in. Um, but it's just, uh, it just hurts. It just hurts when you, you just know they're not going to win a cup. You just know they're not going to be able to get there. And... Um, Especially with this defensive core, which is the, the really big issue. And then if you trade away Murray, then you're really just hoping Jari is the one that can that can hold it. And I'm not convinced he can do that for an entire season. I, I think you kind of need another goalie to be able to go back on. So, 
not that I hate Jari or anything. I, I, I think he's. I think there's a really good goalie there, but it's just um, uh, not convinced he can do it for a whole year, especially with the defensive lineup. Um, you know the holes that that are created with the with the with the offense there, and it's just Kapanen doesn't fix any of those problems. He just doesn't. He's great on the PK. We have a good PK. He's speedy. We have speedy players. Like it's not an issue. And I'm happy he's back. I just wish it was for a different move. I, I don't get. I don't get how this ends up happening. I hate this whole rut of it all. We need to make fair trades and fair deals. Like the Leafs are up against a cap. They're in cap hell, and they have problems to to fix. They won this trade hands down. They absolutely fleece the Penguins, and um, and you know they've got uh, Robertson coming up, and and he'll take this spot. Um, so yeah, they've. Yeah, for them, they've it's just found money. It's cap. It's it's um, and he's done a good cap hit. I'll, I'll I'll mention that too. So that does help the Penguins a little bit. But um, yeah, the price tags just it's such an overpayment for something that doesn't fix the team. I would have understood overpaying a bit for a really good defender. I would have and and maybe to get Jack Johnson off the books at the same time if he could manage that. I would get that. I would completely understand. I would I would say it sucks, but I would say I get it. I don't get this. I don't understand why, what Kapanen does. Um, he's been a third line for the whole time. He's going to get top line minutes. What he does with them is, is yet to be seen. I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it working out. I, I think this is like the first real... If we thought the Jack Johnson deal was the kind of like the moment of like, oh, this is where the decline happens. This is, might be the first deal towards just like a really crap couple of years. Like I, this team, when it's all said and done, just has the, has all the makings of a Detroit Red Wings that was just trying to make the playoffs every year and, and didn't really do anything. And, and now they're just in, in absolute hell. And this team really has the makings of that. It sucks. It sucks. Like, I, I, I kind of, I'm not even mad. I'm just, it's just depressing that, like, that there's no look to the future. It's let's try win a cup now. And I'd understand if they could. If they could win a cup now and this made a difference, I would completely understand this move. But they, they just can't. They just can't. And that, that, that kind of sucks. It, it's kind of a sucky realisation that, they're like, the, the window is... I don't think it's closing anymore. I think it's closed. I mean, we'll see what other rabbits, you know, Rutherford might be able to pull out of the hat. We don't know what's what's all said and done, but right now, for me, it just looks like if the door's not shut, it, it's it's getting pretty close. It's getting pretty close to, to being shut. And, um, yeah, it's a bit de depressing. At least the Penguin game reviews will be funner now because... Well, they're just going to get lit up most nights and, and we're just going to be like, we traded away our first round pick and it's just going to be me yelling into a camera. Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, that is the whole video. If you'd like this video, hit the like button. Otherwise, hit subscribe if you've made it all this way and haven't. Uh, we're up to 157 now, so we're really growing this thing, um, which is great. Unbelievable. We've got another one overnight, so it seems to be getting one a day at least, um, which is really good. Um, got some videos breaking down the Boston Lightning series, um, which the game two still going on, and then uh, Vegas and Vancouver, and we're also live streaming the Flyers game uh, tomorrow uh, morning my time, but it's uh, mid afternoon in America. So if you want to come hang out, um, do that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See you and bye.